also this evening the story of Karen Ann Quinlan's parents. Karen is still in a coma, alive, unchanged. It's her parents' lives that have changed. on the podcast i am dj darren i'm six string 105 today we are at heaven's gate cemetery in east hanover new jersey we were doing some filming locations here and we came across this this uh tombstone and it kind of hit us because we know the story and we wanted to bring it out to you this uh headstone here that we're at is karen ann quinlan if you remember her back in 1975 um young girl 21 years of age Ended up going to a party. Uh, she was on a quick, you know, fast diet trying to lose some weight. Ended up uh, taking a mixture of alcohol and Valium. A um, few minutes after uh, she took that concoction, uh, basically she went into respiratory failure. Okay. Um, it was in a coma. They ended up trying to revive her, but after that entire uh, period of being down, she had sustained so much brain trauma that. Uh, she became brain dead and was put into a coma where she laid in a vegetative state. Um, in the hospital that she was in, her parents knew that you know there was no life for someone to live in a vegetative state. I right. Mean, what, do you, what do you do as a parent? What do you do as a family member watching your child or family just lay there knowing that there is zero brain activity and they're just going to lay there for the rest of their life? Right, exactly. So the parents turned around and wanted to take her off of life support. Um, but the great state of New Jersey would not allow that. So it came down to if they removed the vent from her throat, the Supreme Court would have charged the family with homicide. So they ended up taking this issue to the Supreme Court and ended up winning um, the court case. So after that time, they were able to remove the vent from um, uh, Karen Ann's uh, throat so she can breathe on her, her own. own. Um, and she happened to live for... She actually lived for another, another nine, nine years. years afterwards, but in a vegetative state. There was no brain activity. There was no nothing. They fed her through a feeding tube, everything else. And then in um, 1985, uh, she uh, succumbed to, succumbed to uh, uh, respiratory failure. Due to the flu? Was it? Um, yeah, it had to do some sort of uh, yeah flu or... Um, Influenza or something? Yeah, um, ended up passing away. And she's uh, buried here in East Hanover, New Jersey. Um, it was one of those big right to right to die uh, cases where you had Dr. Kevorkian, who was a big one that the doctor was helping people who didn't want to live anymore, you know, giving them some sort of conco concoction to die. Um, and that's a big thing now where it's still not legal here in the state of New Jersey. I don't know if it's legal anywhere else. Do you know? No, I don't. I, don't, I, I would imagine it's probably not. So I, I think that's a you know big thing there, where if you know that you have no life you know to live, nothing left, and you want to end it, I mean I kind of think it should be your own choice. Absolutely. But in that situation with uh, Karen Ann Quinlan, um, it was up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court was in favor of her family. And but you see what happens after they remove the uh, uh, ventilator. When and she kept on living. She kept on living. She was breathing on her own. But it was just her body breathing. There was basically nothing else left. So, so we wanted to, we wanted to bring you this story, and we're here at the site of her grave. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>